So this is part three of the currency converter program and uh, we're going to talk about a couple of other issues here. Now let me just show you kind of what's happening so far. So if we click the show converter button it opens up our uh, user form. Now I want you to notice that I've preloaded the text boxes with US dollar so that the text boxes already have that in there. If, uh, if I just go ahead and quit I'll show you how to do that. You go to Visual Basic and you click on one of your text fields and in the properties window you can just go right into the text property and actually just type the value right in there for what you want it to be. Um, so I didn't want to do that double click on that. So basically you just go into the properties window and add the value you want it to be to the to the text box. So now let me show you another thing what we're going to do here is I'm going to pick um, one of these values. Let's say I click on the British pound in my currency list here and I say I want to convert from so I hit the pick button and what it does is I've got a little piece of code that's telling me what item it is in the list in the list box here. It says it's item 4. Now if you notice you, you might think it's actually item 5 if you're counting but the list box starts counting at position zero so the Argentine peso is actually position zero and so the British pound is position four so that notion of starting the count at position zero is important you have to keep that in mind and so I'll click OK and then it puts the British pound in there so now it says British pound and it says US dollar and so I could put in the amount in my box here let's say um, put in five dollars hit the convert button which currently isn't doing anything I might want to change the font size in my amount boxes here. And then it should convert the British pound, five British pounds, to the equivalent number of US dollars and show me the result in this box. So if we look at the British pound in this column, we notice that the British pound, one US dollar, um, the British pound is worth 1.435454 US dollars. So to convert five dollars from British pounds, it's actually five British pounds to US dollars. I'd have to multiply this number right here times five. And that would tell me how many US dollars that was. So anyway, you know, just kind of think about that. Well, how would I find out what row I wanted to be in? Well, I got that row from the list index property and you'll see some code for that. In other words when I hit that pick list remember what it did is it said that's in in position four in the list. Well it's actually the fifth item in the list but it's position four in the list. So I can use that four to say okay I know where that is now on the sheet and so I can access these conversion factors. So if I get a four here well I have a piece of text up here in cell A1 so I can't count that one and then I have to start counting at 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So essentially, because it's 0 based in the list box, I have to add 2 to that 4 to get to the correct row on my sheet here. In other words, if I add the 1 for the uh, text up here in cell A1, and then I add another one because I'm starting to count at 0, my British pound is actually in row 6 on the sheet. So my conversion factors are in row 6. So if I can find out what value or what position the item was in the list box, I can use that position to get the conversion factors off the sheet. Okay. So let's go take a look at that little piece of code. So essentially when I hit that pick button, I want you to notice that I just temporarily put a message box in there so that I could see that list index come up on the screen. So all I did was message box a property of my list box. So this is my list box and the property of that list box I wanted was list index. So the list index then gave me back a four when I hit the British pound. Now again you need to remember that the list box entries start counting at zero and the sheet has text in row one that's not part of the conversion factors. So I really have to add two to that list index to store it into my variable. And as soon as the user hits click, you want to store it into your currency from variable. Now you'll notice I've declared a couple of variables up here, the currency from and the currency to. So these two variables are going to hold the row in the index of where the uh, conversion factors are. So 
essentially if I'm going to convert from US dollars though there's no US dollar in that list if you if you look at the list here you'll see there's no US dollar in the list you, you can scroll down on your conversion factors here and there's no US dollar because there doesn't need to be a US dollar if the user just says US dollar they just want to convert US dollar to US dollar then no conversion needs to take place if they want to convert from a particular currency to a US dollar well then the two factors are right here if they want to con convert from a particular from a US dollar to a particular currency well the factors are here also you know they're they're both the factors are here for going either way so anyway maybe what we need to do is we need to initialize these values to a starting value on the load on the form initialization code so here's the user form initialization code right here and so I load the currencies and maybe I need to set the currency from so I'll just go with currency so currency from set that equal to uh, zero let's just say it's zero and the currency to um, I'll set that one equal to zero so we initialize those to known values to start with and then in our code that actually does the conversion we can check and see if the currency from is a zero or if the currency to is a zero and if it's a zero we know that they are selecting the US dollar that they want to convert from or to. If they leave them both zeros, then there's no conversion takes place and you just put your result, you just copy the result into the into the uh, result window. So basically a, a zero value means it's US currency. If it's some other value, which we're picking up here in our button click, and we store it into that variable, well obviously any of those currencies are going to add two to it so for instance let me just show you what happens here if I if I say for instance I want to do Argentine peso so I'll click on the Argentine peso well that's the first item in the list so that's actually position zero in the list so I'll pick that and you will notice it gets position zero but then if I add two to that that'll tell me where it is on the sheet so I can now pick the conversion factors from the sheet in columns two and columns three okay so with this little extra bit of knowledge now you should be able to you should be able to make a little bit more headway because now you'll know what the currency is you'll have that stored in your variable you'll know what currency is you'll know what row the conversion factors are on for either the from or to so when the user clicks on the on the button for doing the conversion then you can tell which rows to pick these conversion factors from do the conversion from the correct currency to US dollars or another currency and put the result in the results box right here give that a shot and if you have questions about this let me know we can maybe extend the video to give you a little bit more information on this thank you